Hello there, Eric here for Together Learning, and today we're going to be discussing new media. We're going to be answering the questions, what is new media? Altogether, what is media, and what makes it new media? And if it's new, what's old media? What's traditional media? So we're going to answer those questions and more, and come with me on this little adventure about new media. So take a look at this here. We have three cups of coffee, a small cup and a large cup. Starbucks calls them something else. But in between a small and a large, there is a medium size, the interim, the average between two things. When we think about these three dogs, to me they're all small dogs, but still there is one medium-sized dog relative to those three. Some, something in between, something average between them. And we have these, by almost anybody's standards, humongous, ginormous cups of soda. And you can find these in convenience stores all over North America. But, but relative to these two sizes, there is one medium. And actually, they call it the super big gulp and the double big gulp. But really, between the two, it's medium. So right now, we're using medium as an adjective, keioshi, right? So a medium coffee, a medium-sized dog, and a medium soda. So that's really, we're talking about the average between two things, the medium, something in between two sizes, two amounts, two lengths. So the example here, Eric is six feet tall and medium build. So my build is average, which a lot of people would argue with. A lot of people think I'm big. Anyway, so, but we can also use medium as a noun to represent something, represent an idea. And that idea is, is some sort of conveyance, some substance, some way to connect people and minds and ideas. It's a form of communication. So a medium is something that helps us express an idea from one person to another person, some way, something in between. So just like between the small cup of coffee and the large cup of coffee, there is a medium size. Between me and someone listening to me, there is a medium of communication. And right now I'm using language, English language, and video as a medium, as for me, to communicate to you. So we, this is a medium. Language is a medium. Video is a medium. But when we think about all the medium in the world, I said medium, but really it's media, the plural form of medium. So one medium and two medium. So when we say media, we're thinking about all the different ways for people or groups of people to communicate with other people. We, sometimes we think of mass media as another word. So that's this media communicating with one person to another, but on a massive scale with large numbers of people. That's just a little recap of what I've just said. Media is the plural of medium. It's the collective communication outlets or tools that are used to store and deliver information or data. Or really, we're talking about expressing ideas, not just information, too. So, thinking about media, just take about 10 or 15 seconds and try to think about all the different forms of media that can be used to communicate one person's idea to another person. Some of them go back a long ways. Hundreds of years, thousands of years in some instances. Have you thought of any? All right, let's go through them. Starting a long time ago, people living in caves wrote pictures up on the cave walls to communicate ideas to each other. 
And that's a form of print, paintings. After where we writing on papyrus scrolls. Soon after that, we started making uh, books. We started printing newspapers. Now we have magazines and billboards. And then we got into recordings and cinema, putting our voice and our picture, our moving picture, on some sort of media, perhaps a CD or a DVD. And before that, there are many different kinds to put our information, our ideas, on a physical object and then distribute that to people so they can hear us, so they can see us, so they can read about us. So really, these three things are taking our communication or our idea and putting it into a physical object and then giving that or distributing that to people. And then that sort of changed with the introduction of radio and television. What's different about these two is that we don't have to have a physical object that's storing this information, our ideas on it, to hear it. We can pull radio and TV out of the sky or through the information flowing through our uh, cable networks. And another thing that's different about this is that I write a book, I have to print it, I can give it to you, and it's almost like time travel because you may not read it for 10 years, 50 years. So in a way, my communication is laid dormant, is trapped inside of that, um, that medium, that book, that recording, that CD, until someone decides to find that object and access that information. But radio and television, it's broadcasted, so it happens like that. And anybody can pick that up and snatch that information out of the rave. So one source, many people, and it's instantaneous. So that's leveling up the print and recordings into radio and television. But we did, we did that level up process again with internet. Because now we have print, recording, cinema, radio, television, all in one place, and that's on the internet. And now all of those things become accessible whenever we want. Well, of course, we have to have internet access to do that. And then, not too much longer, we started getting mobile phones, more specifically smartphones, and we could put the internet in our pocket. Not just the internet, though. This is the culmination of all the media that came before it. There's books, recordings, movies, radio, television, all forms of media, all now in my pocket. And what's different about these two than ever before is that print let us give a book to someone, recordings let us give a CD to someone, radio let us broadcast our ideas to countless of people at the same time. But that was all one-way communication, the author to the reader, the singer to the listener, and the uh, news uh, program announcer to the people watching that program. You couldn't talk to that person. You would just listen. But now the internet and mobile technologies is allowing us to turn that into two-way interactive communication. And that's what's most important about this. And that is what is making it new. Now, instead of watching TV, you can watch a YouTube video and you can write a comment or make a video and send it right back to them. It has become interactive. It is also on demand. You can watch it whenever you want. The radio and TV, you had to turn on your television or your radio at a specific time to get that radio program. So those are the two things, on demand and interactive. That's what makes it new. And this last one, augmented reality, you'll have to uh, contact me about information about that. It's actually part of my research, and I have countless information about where I think the new form of media will be in the future. But I won't have time to go into that right now. 
So I talked about a couple of different things about this. What makes new media new? And that is what I just said earlier, that it's, number one, it's on demand. You can read it whenever you want. You can start your movie and watch it whenever you want. Listen to radio whenever you want. Any program. And number two, it's interactive. It's not one-way communication. It's two-way communication. Some people also call this Web 2.0. So let's look at the some one of the formal definitions of that. New media, content available on demand through the internet, accessible on any digital device, usually containing interactive user feedback and creative participation. So we can you take just a moment and think about some forms of new media. We looked at traditional media, print, recordings, cinema, radio, and television. So now we get into internet and mobile. Can you think of ways we use the internet and our mobile technologies as a medium to communicate? Actually, there's more than I can count. Many different applications, websites, things like Facebook, Twitter, Skype. There are countless new forms of new media. And there's countless new being made almost every day. And this is changing the way that we're communicating. Some say for the good, some say for the worse. But this is what drives society in the way we communicate with each other. When we started making books, we started writing and communicating ideas in different ways. Same thing with movie and TVs. And the same thing is now happening with our new media. Just to recap here, we have some tr forms of traditional media to kind of compare them with new media. So we have the print, newspapers, magazines, books. That's what I'm talking about with the physical objects and distributed thing. And then we could broadcast them with television, radio, movie, movies, and music. But then we get into new media and we have things like websites, blogs, email, ebooks, social networks like Twitter and Facebook, streaming video and music, podcasts, where these are things where we can view them, listen to them, or read them whenever we want, and we have an easy way to give feedback, or at least to access other people reading or watching it and converse with them as well. So in, in a sense, new media, everyone gets to be a television producer or a movie star or a uh, radio show host because now it's two-way and going not just in one direction, but the listener gets to con contribute to the world's media as well. Just another way to look at types of new media. Here's a couple of uh, lists and some examples for you. Chat rooms. Line is popular here in Japan. Email, which is almost old now these days, so less and less being used actually. Social networking sites like, like I said, Facebook, LinkedIn. Content aggregators. Those are people that take videos and things and put them out, redistribute them for other people to see. Virtual reality and what I mentioned before, augmented reality are basically a virtual environment that you can go in. Online gaming is a form of new media. We can go into a game together and communicate as well. Blogs, portals, and social news sites are also support types of new media, but there's also endless other forms, and I'm sure you can think of some others as well. One other important point to make about traditional media versus new media is that, especially longer ago, it was very hard, time-consuming, cost a lot of money to convey your information because you had to, for example, in the for early newspaper days, you had to uh, set up what you wanted to say, put all the typefaces into an intricate machine, and then start pumping out 
newspapers. And then you had to have somebody physically hand them to other people. In the old days of the first film, you had to use these expensive machines and take in thousands of pictures. And on the what was a very expensive film, copy it and distribute those to movie houses to be seen again. Very expensive and very time consuming. But, for example, on the new medium side, here I am making the video for everyone to see and it cost me almost nothing. It cost me very little time, just my my prior expertise if there is such a thing. So traditional media is time consuming and expensive and new media is usually cheap and easy and accessible to almost everyone. So I put this question to you and you can write it as a comment on this video or you can send it to me as a message. How can you use new media to practice or learn English? I'm sure you can think of many ways. And you're actually an example of that right now by watching this video. All right. Hope you have some good ideas. Look forward to reading what you have to say in the comments below. Again, my name is Eric. We're Together Learning, and I'll see you next time. Meow, 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 meow.